Hi, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and here we're going to simplify the following expression. x squared minus x minus 6 all over x squared minus 4. And so what we're going to do is really tackle it one step at a time and figure out the best way to simplify this. Now, the number one thing you need to realize as an algebra student is anytime you have a fraction like this, it is true that you are taught that you can cancel anything in the numerator and in the denominator that is also present in the numerator and in the denominator. So a lot of students will look at a problem like this and immediately try to cancel the x squared with the x squared and then they might end up with uh, negative x minus 6 over negative 4 or something and start to go that direction. Well that that is not correct. You cannot cancel this x squared with this x squared. What you need to remember is that anytime you have a uh, expression like this that has a lot of terms added or subtracted in the numerator and a lot of terms that are added or subtracted in the denominator, this whole thing right here, you really need to imagine sort of an imaginary parentheses around the whole entire numerator and an imaginary parentheses around the whole entire denominator. So all of these things with the pluses and minus here, they're, they all behave as sort of one term. And then this guy down here, because there's a minus here, it behaves as one giant term. So you really cannot just cancel it like that. Uh, what, you, what you really need to do is think a little bit harder. Now let me rewrite the problem one more time. So what we have is uh, x squared minus x minus 6 divided by x squared minus 4. Now I'd like to talk for just a second about uh, why we are able to cancel things from the numerator and denominator of a fraction. If you have, let's say, uh, forget about this problem for a second. If you have uh, x uh, times, let's say y, whatever y is, doesn't matter, another variable, and on the bottom you have x, then yes, in this case you're allowed to cancel the x with the x. And that's because everything is multiplied together here in the numerator. And the denominator only has one term. But even if I had you know, a little bit um, additional things in the bottom, what if I had a z down here? It doesn't matter, anything else. As long as everything's multiplied together in the top and multiplied in the bottom, then I can cancel terms that are common. And that's because it's like saying in terms of numbers, it's like saying um, uh, 3 times 4 divided by uh, 2 times 4. Well, I can take 3 times 4 and make it equal to 12. And I can take 2 times 4 and make it equal to 8, and then I can simplify the result, but it's going to be exactly the same thing as if I just cancel the 4 with the 4 and make it 3 halves. Because that's what I get if I, if I divide the top by uh, 4, and if I divide the bottom by 4, if I simplify this fraction. And that's because everything's multiplied together. That's why I'm allowed to strike these 4s out like this. Because it's like taking and multiplying by something, which is right here, and then turning around and dividing the thing by the same number. So you're multiplying and you're dividing in the same fraction, and that's why you're able to really cancel them. But here, there's no multiplication going on in the top. I mean, you have x squared here, but all the terms, they're not, they're, none of them are multiplied together. Same thing in the bottom. So you really have a problem. You can't just take one of these random terms here and cancel it out. It's just not allowed. So what you need to do is factor these expressions and see if they get you anywhere. If you look at the top, you should know how to factor expressions in algebra. So here we have uh, a three term expression. We can put an x here and we can put an x here because x times x gives us x squared. Now the next thing you need to look at is what times what is going to give me 6? Well, there's a few choices. I can do 1 times 6. I can also do 2 times 3 because the last terms 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. So sort of the first thing you do when you start to factor a trinomial like this is you, you look and you have an x squared. So you have to put x times x to give you x squared. Now you have to pick two numbers to multiply to give you 6. 2 times 3 does that. Next I need to pick my signs. And there's only one way this is going to work out, and it just comes by practice. I need to put a plus here and a minus here. And that works because if I take 2 times negative 3, that gives me my negative 6. And then the inside two terms is going to give me 2 times x is 2x. The outside terms is negative 3 times x is negative 3x. So negative 3x plus my 2x from this term gives me my negative x. So if I choose different numbers here, or if I choose different signs here, then I'm, going, I'm not going to get back what I started with. So when you start factoring these expressions, you need to pick the leading terms and the trailing terms and the signs to get back what you started with. And that really just comes from watching a lot of examples and practicing a lot. 
So we factored this. Now notice this is a term multiplied by this other term. So this is a multiplication going on in the numerator of this fraction. Now in the denominator we have x squared minus 4, but if you remember that is the difference of two squares because 4 can be written as 2 squared. So we have x squared minus 2 squared and that is going to be factored as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Again, this is something that you're not born knowing. This is something that when you do enough algebra, you recognize that x squared minus 4, because it's a perfect square here, 4 is equal to 2 squared, can be written as x plus 2 times x minus 2 because x times x gives me x squared. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. The inside term is going to give me 2x. The outside term is going to give me negative 2x. They're going to cancel, so I don't have any other term left here. So this multiplied together, you should be able to convince yourself is equal to this. Now look at what we have. We have something fundamentally uh, different than what we started with. I mean, it's all equal, but what we have here is we have an x minus 2 term that can cancel with this x minus 2 term. The reason we can cancel it here is because this is a term multiplied times this. This is a term multiplied times that. It's like taking our fraction, you know, 6 times 2 divided by, you know, 9 times 2. I can take a number, multiply by 2, and then turn around, divide by 2 down here, and then the 2's effectively aren't going to matter. Here I've got a fraction where I'm multiplying by this term, and then I'm dividing by the same term. We cannot cancel them here because over here it's not, there's no multiplication. This is wrapped up in an in addition. Another way to think about it, I tell students every time you see something in the top of a fraction, imagine parentheses around both of the terms. This is a term. You can cancel terms. You cannot cancel individual pieces of terms unless you factor them out like this. So once we've done the work here, the answer really presents itself because we cancel the x plus 2 and off the top and off of the bottom. And so in the end of the day, we're going to get x minus 3 on the top. And on the bottom, we're going to get x minus 2. And that is actually the full uh, factored answer after we've canceled this. So if this were an equation, this guy divided by this is equal to 0 or equal to 5 or something like that, then you would have a little more work to do because then you would be solving for x. But in, in this case, we were just trying to simplify this expression. So we factored the top, we factored the bottom, and we look for terms to cancel. So the lesson to take away from this is that you can only cancel terms in the top and in the bottom of a fraction if what you're trying to do is result of a multiplication in the top and a multiplication in the bottom. You cannot just cancel terms that you see in the top and the bottom when they're added or subtracted in the top because that really just makes no sense. And I tried to show you that with fractions, why we were allowed to do it. It's because you're multiplying by something and you're turning around and dividing it back out again. So that's why it basically disappears. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've learned something from this. Practice, get a few extra problems and make sure that you understand it. Work this problem again until you do understand it. With practice comes confidence and you'll get better at these types of problems.